Now you'll remember before that second Tunny fight, Dempsey was actually in a title eliminator, which was the first non-title fight to garner a million dollar gate. And that was with a lad named Jack Sharkey. And is very famous for the knockout finish being controversial, but um, that, if you know the story of Jack Sharkey, that is just one of many, many things that made him a very frustrating fighter to watch. Um, William Muldoon, who was uh, head of the New York State Athletic Commission for quite a while, a uh, very important figure in boxing, said that Sharkey was the uh, the greatest fighter in the world from the neck down. <laughs> he had all these mental issues and he just made baffling decisions. But, um, you know, he was everything that you could want from a fighter. He was uh, 189, 190 pounds roughly for most of his career. Um, he was thickly muscled, but he could move just as well as most of the heavyweights, uh, better than most, in fact. Uh, and the other thing was that he had every punch in the book. He was a very smart fighter, uh, didn't rely too much on one punch. He'd hook off the jab beautifully. He'd hit the body wonderfully. Uh, his right hand could knock anyone out. You know, he could punch with the best. He punched with Jack Dempsey for however many rounds. Um, when they got in the kitchen, uh, he was happy to just trade with Dempsey. You know, he was executing this game plan at range but when Dempsey stepped in and this is another sign of that Jack Sharkey uh, mental aspect he'd just start throwing back you know he, he was supposed to tie up and he'd just throw back and, and he'd get the better of uh, Dempsey on many occasions but watching Sharkey's footage is absolutely fascinating because he is um, one of the best rounded fighters you'll see from the from this era as with most uh, boxers at this time, he was not using his birth name. He was born uh, Joseph Zukakis. Uh He was uh, the son of Lithuanian immigrants. And he took up boxing when he was in the Navy. And the story goes that he signed up for this tournament in the Navy and um, the sergeant in charge of the sign-up sheet said, what's your name? And he said, Joseph Zukakis. And <laughs> the guy goes, you can do better than that. Uh, so he, he took... Jack from Jack Dempsey, because he was an enormous Dempsey fan. Dempsey was the champion at the time. Um, and he took Sharkey from Sailor Tom Sharkey, partly because he was a sailor. And also Sharkey had a legendary fight with Jim Jeffries. Uh, you know, he took all that Jim Jeffries could give him in an era where Jim Jeffries was just decking everyone. But Tom Sharkey was about 5'8", and, uh, <laughs> and it built like a block. He had a barrel chest and, and was just very square. Uh, Jack Sharkey was six foot even. And uh, just a perfect heavyweight, really. I mean, in in that era, nowadays he'd be more like a light heavyweight or a cruiserweight. But um, yeah, just a guy who, in an era of light heavyweights who were fighting up in weight and, and really n looking small and other heavyweights who were just schlubs, um, Sharky was like the, the space on the Venn diagram between size and skill. If we talk a little bit about um, Sharky's style... He was a very tricky and clever boxer. If you watch the Dempsey fight, um, from the get-go, he wants to uppercut Dempsey's head off uh, because Dempsey comes in with his head low and uh, his chin completely buried. You'll remember Gene Tunney was talking about that in the last episode. Um, so he starts looking for the right uppercut and the, and the left uppercut every time Dempsey's stepping in. He's throwing out these jabs and, and trying to uh, mark Dempsey up at range. But uh, within the first round, he connects a lead hand uppercut as uh, Dempsey steps in. Very rare to see that punch done well. You know, Alexis Arguello, um, that was one of his killers. You know, people don't expect that punch. Uh, and he snaps Dempsey's head back, sends him reeling, uh, punches him a few more times along the ropes. And obviously Dempsey is, is tough as nails. And, and even if his eyes glaze over, he'll just keep going. But uh, that was round one, and everyone knew then that Jack Sharkey was the real deal. Sharkey's footwork is quite interesting because he has this, like, bouncing style. If you look at Sharkey's feet when he's moving, he uh, often his rear knee, his right knee, is pointing down, and he's up on the ball of his back foot. And that's something you typically see from guys who want to uh, be able to phase back and immediately hit with the right hand. Um... And he tried that a lot in his fight with uh, Max Schmeling, which we're going to get onto in a minute. Uh, that's the stance he uses throughout, and he's trying to fade away and, and hit the right hand. And then that that foot will pivot out on the ball of the foot, and the heel will drop to the floor on the inside when he wants to step in with a, a dipping jab or something like that. He could hook off the jab really well, which is something that you really don't see from heavyweights in this era. You start seeing it a lot more with uh, Joe Lewis, obviously. Um, but, I mean, T Tunney didn't do it very well, and he was considered a, a master 
boxer for a heavyweight. Um, but Sharky uh, did it masterfully, and he really confused um, Phil Scott with that when he uh, went to the UK. Uh, he did it a, a good amount against Tommy Loughran, but Do- Tommy Loughran was fast as lightning and, and didn't have any of that. And the thing about Sharky was that he was a very adaptable fighter. Uh, and I'm, I'm I'm saying adaptable rather than um, he did adapt very well because like uh, there are fights where he makes baffling decisions, um, but there are other fights where he demonstrates that he understands a different game plan is necessary and he executes it perfectly. You know there are plenty of fighters who can only fight the way they know how to fight. Um, Jack Dempsey is a great example, but you see Sharky against. Um, Primo Carnera later on, who's gigantic, towers over him, he's 6'6", six, six, uh, and he, he uses beautiful level-changing punches to the body, in and out, um, not relying on his heavy hitting, but setting up the big blows uh, and pecking at Carnera constantly. Then you see him against uh, Jack Dempsey, and he he's doing a lot more hitting on the inside, he's using the uppercut more. Uh, you see him against Tommy Loughran, and he's really trying to uh, abuse his weight advantage and his power over the light heavyweight uh, champion. And the Loughran fight is actually a fantastic example because Tony, Tommy Loughran, who is going to come up a fair bit in this episode because he features in a lot of guys' stories, but he does never win the heavyweight championship. He is considered one of the greatest light heavyweights of all time. Um, hundreds of fights on his record and uh, a beautiful jab. And he has this very long rangy stance with both knees bent. And it almost looks like Machida-esque. He's got that like old school side on uh, karate style. Um, he was giving Sharky fits for two rounds. Um, until Sharky realised about midway through the second round that because the lead hand was always out there probing and, and feeling, um, he could smack it about. So midway through the second round, uh, Sharky snaps that hand out of the way from the inside and runs in with the right hand to the body, uh, catches him along the ropes. And then as soon as they come out for the third round, he pins that lead hand down with an inside hand trap and rushes in with the right hand to the head, just Dex Lochran outright. And that was just a real sharp adjustment in the moment that uh, demonstrated the sort of cerebral fighter that Sharky could be. However, there is always going to be hanging over his head that Dempsey loss, which, uh, you know, through seven rounds, uh, Sharky was battering Dempsey and just completely outclassing him. Uh, And then Dempsey starts hitting him low because Dempsey's old school like that. (laughs) And uh, Sharky takes another one in the crotch in the seventh round turns to the referee to say, are you going to do anything about this? And Dempsey hits him in the head while he's doing it. And he goes down like he's been shot. Um, And Dempsey said afterwards, what did he expect me to do? Send him a letter of apology? Um, And it is fair, you know, the the protect yourself at all times thing is very important. And if the guy is fouling you, he's clearly going to take advantage of any um, moment you give him. So uh, it was very... Uh, well, it was a sign of frustration from Sharky that he did it and uh, just not having his head in the game as much as he should for a guy of his ability. So that Dempsey fight haunts him a fair amount. But by the Dempsey fight, he was already recognised as one of the best heavyweights in the world, obviously, because it was a title eliminator. Coming from Boston, uh, he wanted to be like the people's fighter, but uh, as a Lithuanian in Boston, often fighting Irish fighters, uh, he was often on the bo- uh, the uh, receiving end of boos and jeers despite wanting to be like the the crowd favorite. Um, So he was used to being the guy that people rooted against and and that happened again against Dempsey. But after that fight with Dempsey, he has a draw with Tom Heaney and then loses a fight to Johnny Risco. Um, But he does this all quite quickly and and within six months, he's started turning it around. He knocks out like heavyweight Jack uh, Jack Delaney and then he starts racking up these wins. 